Okay. What we're going to do is um, just look very briefly at just the very first part of the module. Um, what Kay and I have done is put together handouts for you to take today. This is one of them. You'll be getting another set from her before you leave. Um, if you like any of the activities that you experienced today and you'd like to know um, what, the, what the instructions were or sort of what they were all about, um, these are the copies of that. So you'll, you'll get copies of everything for that today. Um, we're not going to do see, don't see. A lot of the points that we have on this we've already talked about incidentally as we've gone through the workshop today. So if you don't mind, we'll watch just the very beginning part of this. We'll go into the centers. I really want to, we want to give you guys as much yeah. time with the centers as you want today. Then we'll debrief it and then we'll let you go home. Okay. This is a nice contrast, I think, to the, the boy and girl one that we saw. What do you notice that's different about this class? Anything? They're standing. They're standing. They're older, a little bit older. So this is about, about third grade. Um, this, is, this is also in Central America, by the way. She does talk faster, a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. they I'm larger. sorry? Larger class. It is a larger class. This was a huge class. This had 40 or 50 kids in it. Yeah. They have physical actions they have to do. Nonetheless, in a class with 50 kids, she was doing physical action. Mm -hmm. What a lot of people think um, when you talk to teachers about doing physical movement in the activity, they say, oh, I can't. You know, it's too crowded. The desks are too tight. The kids go nuts. You know, I, I have no control. Um, how was it structured, though? Was, was it this kind of movement or this kind of movement? This kind of movement. So we saw some very nice examples of up and down movement as opposed to side by side or roaming around the classroom. Uh, were the kids out of control? Were they noisy? No, they were engaged. It was very clear. They were on task. They were moving. It was kinesthetic. They were using their voices. Um, was it long and stretched out? No, it's a very short, very short kind of transition or warm-up kind of activity. So a lot happening in this classroom. Who was teaching? Very interesting. Who was teaching? Two. I saw two. Two, two teachers. teachers. This was a very nice example of team teaching. We saw a lot of team teaching in this school. Um, what else did you notice about the two teachers? One was male, one was female. Um, also a very nice ex ex example of, of team teaching together. That works in some locations and some not. But there's a, a lot to look at in these. Um, Sarah made the point during the break that all of these video clips were chosen because they are so rich, because there's so much happening and expressed in that amount of time. Um, we've gone very quickly through them today. We've only looked at them once. Typically with our training audiences, we go through them two or three times. Um, my online students report back to me that they're watching them five and six times, that they're pausing and rewinding constantly. Um, they're sitting with their study buddy, and they're looking at it and sort of talking about it as they're watching it multiple times. So that is the, the beauty of a videotaped observation. You may, it may not be as holistic as a 90-minute class that you sit in in person, but you do have the luxury of going back over points again and again and from different perspectives and angles. Okay. Are you ready to play Learning Centers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's do it. Um, Kay, you want to talk about yours first? You've got two set up well, here. Well, we have two set up here. Um, starting here, this is a don't look activity. And remember, don't look. No peeking. Uh, listen and build activity. And for this, for this one, we're, we have blocks over here, Legos. And there are the directions for the Legos activity here. And on this side, we have a fun, um, we have four uh, so enough for two pairs here with uh, magnetic balls and sticks to build things, which are a lot of fun. So the, when you're using these activities, you'll be working with a screen and setting up the screen in front of you and taking turns. One of you will build something and then give directions or to the other person. If you want, you can give the directions while you're building it. And your partner has their screen up, and they're building behind the screen. And you can't look, and you're not using your hands. You can sit on your hands, but no peeking to see what's done until you say finished. And then down come the, sc the screens. And you can look and see how correct you were and uh, with your directions or your understanding. So that's this one. Uh, okay. Focusing on shapes, prepositions, uh, command forms you can be thinking about 
what types of language objectives go with that. Good. In the middle here, we have fun with fractions. <laughs> and this is a, another, con well, a content-based type of instructional activity with math um, points. And uh, directions are here on the table. So all you do is read the directions, put your name on it, and when you're finished, you can put your paper in the box. And Liv? Okay. Uh, we also have some other activities that may be familiar to you. In this corner, um, this has two activities. One um, is designed for younger learners and one for slightly older learners. We have paper bag puppets. Um, there's some instructions up here for building paper bag puppets. If you'd like to do a kinesthetic activity, something that involves a little bit of role play, um, listening and speaking, you can work by yourself or you can work with a buddy. You might have more fun working with a buddy. If you'd like to try something at a slightly older level, there's a reader's theater activity. You can come and read the instructions for that and check it out. Now, if you were students, if you were younger learners, we would be doing a lot more modeling with this and actual putting up of examples and posting of work. Since it's the purpose of this is to demonstrate training, we're going to rely on you to not only look at it and do it and figure it out, but then, as Kay mentioned, to step back from it and analyze it as well, thinking about what kind of audiences would do that, what kind of language would be involved, um, things that from a training perspective. And seeing this, let me just jump in, seeing this as a task, as one link in a task chain. So mm -hmm. this would be an opportunity for your learners to be practicing the language of shapes and prepositions of location that they had already learned earlier. So One thing that we don't have happening in this class and that you often see in classes with learning centers that the, is that they're more directly linked, as I mentioned earlier. So if you're doing a science unit, you, know, you would have it reflected, you know, plants, um, weather, uh, sports, whatever sort of your, your theme in your curriculum happens to be at the moment it would be more boldly reflected in the activity. So these are a little bit more disparate that way. This side um, is story starters. Uh, if you're in a creative writing kind of mood, you'd like a little bit quieter of an activity, there are some story starters here. These uh, people have had a lot of fun with these when we've tested them out in the field. We took the story prompts from Boggles World ESL. Um, you can have a full packet of them at the end if you'd like. You can also download them online. They have a range of language. They have a range of different types of story genres and types. So you can check these out. And just a reminder, we are going to do a sort of free floating method here today. We're not going to time you at the centers or require that you go to a certain number or stay a certain amount of time. Just watch the necklaces. And if there's a spot and you'd like to move, just feel free to move yourself around the room and, and check out as many things as you'd like. Last but not least, over here, the newspaper cut-aparts. Um, we have Iris to thank for a couple of the activities directly here in the room today. These are her uh, peaking boards yes. that, we're, that we're making use of over here. And this is actually an, an idea I adapted from one of your creative writing classes that you taught as an elective years and years ago. So kudos to Iris um, for, for this. Basically, what the students do is they go through the newspaper and they cut out headlines and put them together thematically into ki a kind of a, a poem or a story or a message. They have so much fun with this. When we did this in Riyadh <laughs> last fall, oh my gosh, we got the most outrageous stories. They were so much fun. Yeah. Um, so teachers have had, we've seen have had a lot of fun with this as well. All the supplies are on the cart. Um, feel free to dive in. We'll pick it all up together at the end. So five stations. Five different tasks. Any questions? So when we finish the task, we put the necklace back up on the walls. Right. So let's see. I want to come play newspapers. I see there are necklaces. I come over. I put one on for as long as I stay at the station. Then I muck around. Um, when I'm finished, I put it back. And then another person can come put it on. We actually have a lot of people. Um, and we've designed it so I, I don't think we'll have overcrowding at any of the stations, but you're all, you're all mature adults. I'm sure it will work itself out. <laughs> <laughs> Inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> so Bruno's question is, are these all done in pairs? This is the only station that mm -hmm. requires pairs. Right. The other stations can be done individually or in pairs. It's up to you. It's your choice. Okay, so if you go to a station and there's no, no pair, but you need a pair, you just sit and wait until you somebody shows up. This is the only for you, Bruno. I'll come and get you. <laughs> this, is, this is the only station where you need a pair. 
right. at the other stations can all be done individually. But if, if, you're, if you're feeling codependent, <laughs> Tiffany's there for you. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question here. Glue the headlines, right? What about the read your story? Do we have to put the story on the list? Well, I think we're, I think the the um, when we when we cut out the words and put them on a piece of paper, they make the story. Just the headline. Yeah. When you use the headline, that's what I think we're doing. That's what I think we're doing. Yeah. Ready with. This is yeah. complicated. Okay, so my, yeah. my structure is two dimensional. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, it's, no it's, it's, it's two dimensional except for one thing. Okay. Mostly it's going to be lying flat on the desk. Okay. Take the long red piece, uh -huh. the long blue piece, uh -huh. with the long yellow piece. Okay. And the long green piece. Okay. And you're going to make a square. Right. But the order okay. will be this. Green, yellow. Where? Just start with green. Okay. Yes. On the right, put yellow. On the, okay, the green is on top. And it's going to be to uh, They're right lying down. Uh -huh. They're lying down. Okay. So you're going to make a square. Okay. Uh, uh, so the green uh, is going to cover the bottom. The bottom, okay. Is that? Okay. Yes. And then the yellow is the right side. Okay. Blue is the top side. All right. And yellow, red is the left side. Okay. Makes sense. There's no silver ball. Okay. okay. The silver ball is there's only one silver ball. All right. Where? And it's between the red and the green. Between the red and the green. All right. Now, you're going to rotate the square so that it's sitting in front of you like a diamond instead of a square. Like a? A diamond. So it's the square sitting on the diamond. Like old school or something. And then when you're finished, be sure you post, post it on the wall. Oh, OK. Other being a thing we changed for quarter yeah. yeah, being a curious type, I nevertheless <laughs> took the jar to a closet where I thought no one would see me. Once inside, I slowly removed the lid, freeing the seed. I froze, breathless, as the seed rose from the depths of the jar. Okay. Yeah. A subtle, what? A subtle glow began to emit from the seed as inch by inch the sprout germinated, twisting and winding its way through the hangers. Oh, wow. I, uh, in short time, I became enveloped by its soft green leaves. Little did I know that it was about to devour me. Wow. Is that the end? That seems pretty nice. I like that. I mean, what else can you say after that? Okay. Uh, I think it needs to go on for a while before you. Yeah. Well, I was, I was He's the germinator. I'm germinate. <laughs> germinate. I was going to terminate because I was going to move on. So. Then I heard my mother calling my name. How do you spell the hour? Without the E. Can make it look right. Yeah, there. Oh, you are. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, what's coming next? There is no butter. How about the quarter by being ripped in four separate pieces by the seed? It's drawn in quarters by the seed. No! Where's Conan, the librarian? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> to my rescue came Conan. Okay. No man are rescuing anyone. Oh, yeah. Could be. How about uh, what's the warrior princess? What's her name? Xena. 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 Z-E-N-A. I still like that someone was calling or my, my cell phone went off and I couldn't get it out of my pocket because the, the well, he's said, you know, had drawn and quartered me. Plastered my hands to my side and and then Zena. I don't care what Zena did oh at any point. Oh, you want to have a little more action before Zena enters? Well, I don't care. You guys, uh, whatever. Just, uh, it's up to you. Fortunately, at Zena. that moment, let Zena come in with a plaintive cry. But there has cry. to be like a reason that you want to be Zena rescued by Zena. Yeah, palace. because he's about to be devoured. So there's got to be some kind of fortunate happening before the right. Now, wait before you eat it. How many pieces did you cut? Uh, you. Three. <laughs> Take one piece, what fraction of banana did you take? One third. You need to write that down too. You made your banana. Thank you.
Take 15 next. Give two thirds of the nuts to your friends. Okay, here we go. Would you like to take those? We just need 15. Oh! But we each need to take 15. Oh, we each? Well, yeah. Well, it says your friend is hungry. So I think just one. Oh, actually, we were each supposed to cut a banana. So we would have each had a third of a banana. Because you guys are supposed to follow your directions. <laughs> Uh, one for this two, two, uh, the individual um, stories. One in five. Okay, go ahead. Try. Where is it? Boo. Boo. Yeah, you got it. Okay. First draft. Maybe. Ah, good job. Okay. I'll have to have one on one side. I, I did it wrong. My mouth was on the wrong side. <laughs> hmm. That's a biologically challenged puppet for sure. <laughs> cleanup time, center cleanup time. If you could wrap up your activity, please. And Put your things back in the bags. You look like you're having fun. Okay. Um, some of you were asking about um, some of the handouts that were used in the learning centers as well. Um, I have a really nice um, summary handout from EduPlace talking about learning centers and why and what. And I'm just going to put it up here. If you want one, you can take one before you go today. Um, I also have copies if you visited the Creative Writing Center or you didn't get to, but you'd like to see what the picture prompts were. There's a complete collection of each one of these, so you can pick up those if you like as well. And if you'd like a copy of the See, Don't See and the Observation Checklist for 12, we gave you one for 8. This is the one for 12. This is up here. And as of course, well. those are also on the, the website, the right. See, Don't See activities. But if you're wanting hard copies. Mm -hmm. Right. Please help yourself. Okay. Uh, thoughts, uh, comments, ideas. Anybody? Learning centers and your teacher training. Yes or no? What? What not? Well, I thought it was a lot of fun to actually do it, and I see a, um, for me there was a real need of an example. Mm -hmm. um, so going in, I had to spend a lot of time. Um, thinking through what I was going to do and the example might have just made that speedier. Okay, that's a good that's a good suggestion. So um this is our first time doing the learning centers here um, with this group. Um, we we found that to be true as well. So when we, we've been doing the workshops in other places, the first time you do it with someone, um, yeah, they, it takes a little longer. And then it, as soon as the work starts going up on the wall, then then people really catch on. What's interesting too, though, about it, sometimes about an example, I don't know if, if any of you find this, but sometimes if you put an example up from the very beginning, it's like it guides it too much. Yeah, I mean, the, it can go kind of either way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah well, we have a, a beautiful collection of uh, puppets now up behind Bonnie. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> if we were going to give awards for the one that took the most time. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I see it had lip correction done on it, too. <laughs> we might talk about the one with the purple hair on the end. However, they're all equally lovely. <laughs> Anybody want to say anything in particular about the puppet, the puppet corner? I just have a suggestion about this, um, mm -hmm. this group and this game. Um, I think that we probably need like written guidance and directions to make sure that um, if we did something wrong, it's not because the directions were wrong, but because... Actually, like a reference, 
like do this and this and this and this so at the end at the end you can check your answers and you have written directions because um, some of the people did get something wrong like different model but they didn't know whether like they didn't hear the directions well they were mistaken about the directions or actually the person was giving the wrong directions to them so if you have like written reference of directions of how put this and this and this and this and this that would be maybe um, better yeah so that so all of all of these are completely open for adaptation so depending and can, on and you can think about why you might make a choice to do it one way yeah. or to do it the other way where yeah. where it's an information gap yeah type of activity or where they're just following following the rules and you can do it more than once and maybe things begin to look more similar the more times you do it yeah. actually that was my experience mm -hmm. the first time we did it yeah because she really had, had a very bad two experience. completely oh. different shapes. Yeah. They weren't anything alike whatsoever. And I thought, oh. <laughs> she was working with her partner, and she really came up with something which is totally different. It's not one of two things different. And it's I totally felt different. I discouraged that I couldn't follow his directions or that something was really wrong. And then I did it again with another person. We got perfect, perfect shapes. So that was very encouraging. And so at the end, you don't have any reference because you don't remember what directions were. So mm. you're like, was it left or right? Oh, I don't know. I think that I said vertical, left. I think horizontal. that I was vertical, but actually you don't have written directions uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. to correct yourself. But that's a language test right there. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I thought thought I said, said left, but I... Yeah. Oh, no, 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 you, no, said, no, you right. said right. I right. Thought, oh. I was sure I said uh -huh. yes. So. And, and that would be a practice activity when after you had already introduced things before that as well. But different ways of, different ways of doing it. Yeah, different focus areas, different expected outcomes. So is it on the communication process itself? Yes. Is it the focus on the end result? Is it on, oh, now we're going to write up directions and see if it improves? I mean, the, the fact that you had two different experiences with two different people, is, it's like, yeah. did you behave differently? Did the two of you just have similar thinking styles? Did you norm more quickly toward each other? I mean, there's a Those sort are good of questions. I, I, think that, know, I think that I checked more on uh -huh. Did you mean to the left? Did you mean perpendicular? Uh, good. So you adjusted your strategies. Well, I yeah. think I did, uh -huh. yes. And so also as a way to teach confirmation yeah. strategies yeah. and repetition requests. And, and checking. Mm -hmm. checking. Also what we're seeing right here right now, if we step back from it, is a really beautiful example of reflection. Um, yeah. So yeah. Here's, here's what I did, here's what I think I did, here's where I changed my you know, behavior sort of midway through. Um, so um, from a, a teaching standpoint, when you're working with learners and you're thinking about these learning strategies or, or reflective practices in your learning and teaching, this is a really nice model of that as well. And it's very interactive, I like it. Yeah. Good, good. All right. There's also an opportunity to talk about classroom management because our group really didn't follow directions. <laughs> But we had a great time. Oh, true confessions of the black group. <laughs> yeah, true. Steps one <laughs> and two, I think. But there was four of us writing one story together. And um, that's, that's as far as we got in following directions. But a lot of language use going on. Hmm? I didn't even see any directions. They're up there on the board next oh. to the <laughs> I just wrote a story. Is there something you would do differently next time? Well, you know, it depends on the teacher, him or herself, how um, tightly controlled they would like the stations to be. In this case, there was so much language and interaction among the people and negotiating. I think it would, that's a valuable language experience. But if you wanted four separate stories, and like step number three or four says, have a person correct it or read it, mm -hmm. then. If, you, if that's your goal, then you would probably figure out some kind of way of making sure people follow the instructions. Absolutely, and that raises a really good point. Um, when you're looking at some of the other modules and what's up on the classroom wall, some of the examples of supporting materials you'll see are at the writing centers are these um, peer editing or self-editing checklists. Mm -hmm. So, you know, check your work before you turn it in or look for each other's points, whether it's sort of a grammatical focus or more of a fluency and content and clarity kind of focus. But um, um, these are pretty bare bones stations or learning centers. Um, as time went on, or depending on the language focused task, um, you could conceivably have a lot of other materials in support at that center. I mean, one of these mentions uh, dictionaries as well, consult your dictionary um, for spelling. So you might have some of these checklists, you might have 
um, other language support tools. Uh, you might be structuring them. They were very lax. We were very lax today, so you might have uh, more controls on them. And also, I think if you add like the feedback on every game for so the students um, reflect on what they did, it would be great too. To, because it's really difficult to manage, as Cindy said, to manage a classroom where you have different groups and you have students who have the ability and the freedom to move around the groups. So you cannot, you don't know what student went to what group and what went well and what went bad. So I think that the feedback would be um, good. Yeah, and that's a really nice um, suggestion, an example of a, an accountability, a self-managing a self and quick accountability kind of thing. So you could have a kind of open-ended exactly. template or, or rubric yes. or grid and people wrote what they did and they reflect on it and yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Goes well with the portfolio system or self-management filing exactly. system as well. Okay. Anybody else? In the food group, uh, Bruno and I uh, kind of expanded the activity and we started doing ratios. So we were doing little gambling mm -hmm. games, you know, hide the peanut under the shell and there are five shells. And you know, the chance is 20% or one-fifth of getting it right and then you get the wrong one. Throw away one shell, now you've got four shells. Your chances are one in four ratio or percentage-wise. So I think for teachers to do these activities with other teachers before they set up the activities for the students, I mean, we're, we're kids too. So we're going to do some of the strange things that our, our students will want to do. Mm -hmm. And I think exploring it in, in the way we did. Uh -huh. We have a lot of feedback for and, and then ideas for how to use the activities with our students. Yeah, right after going into the <coughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> this is when you know you've had a successful activity when you lay out the activity but the people who are using it take it one step further so when people are saying oh gosh what if we uh, had you know students write up their own directions what if the, what if the teacher didn't write the steps what if the students they liked it so much they played it a few times hey now we're gonna make up the shapes and this, the yes. things or oh we liked working with the fraction table so much we were having so much fun we made up this math game mm -hmm. great so it's not the teacher's idea, it's the student's idea. It becomes one of the official stations or one of the official things that you can do at the station when you're, when you're doing it. So um, those natural extensions, those authentic learning kinds of opportunities, um, when they happen, um, it's really great to be able to recognize them and to take advantage of them. And yeah, I think before doing such an activity, like this activity is a kind of sensitive activity for me. Um, it, it might not go with all uh, culture backgrounds and classrooms around the world. Uh, but I think for this type of activity, it is really good to train the students of how to use things like this, like realia or um, uh, items, um, in a good way, um, rather than having fun and starting the eating and jumping around and stuff and not, um, you know, paying attention to that. Like giving them directions or not really training them, but giving them direction that this, these items are not meant to have fun, but these items are meant to do the exercise thing. Or you can have fun and do the exercise. Right. Exactly. But um, yeah, we we uh, we we the, we used a pretty low structure approach today. One of the things that you'll um, see in the kindergarten that we're going to look at shortly, and you'll uh, hear a, a real experienced kindergarten or learning style st stations teacher talk about is um, you have to train students onto the centers. Um, so what they often do is they'll open up one station at a time and sort of open them up over and a, a lot of modeling. A lot of examples, a lot of here are the responsibility guidelines that go with it. These are the expectations. So we didn't do any of that today um, with this group, but that's definitely something you'd want to be thinking about. One thing with the, with the fun with fractions activity, um, I mean, it was intended that students would be eating it because also it, it's the um, addressing all the different learning styles and multiple intelligences. So you've got the colors and the taste and the, all five senses going at work there too. One of the other modules we considered doing today and didn't have time mm -hmm. for um, was integrated skills because the learning centers are so naturally integrated um, in, in the skills and in communicative approaches. Mm -hmm. But um, that's for another day, another time. <laughs> Any other comments before we go on to the last part of the video? There is one thing on the, uh, the, the fractions table. It, it said take 15 peanuts and give two-thirds of them to your friend. Well, I have two friends, and so if I give two-thirds to one, I only have one-third left, and I got confused, and that's where we just decided to start eating. <laughs> <laughs> Compensatory <laughs> strategies. <laughs> you could have, well, let's see, what, what would an, another alternative might have been to take two piles of peanuts, one for each friend? Well, actually, we did that. We got to the stage where he gave me peanuts, 
and I gave half of mine to her, yeah. and so we each had five peanuts. And he's like, but we, we, we it, it became real. Yeah, so clever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> these are these are good critical thinking skills. That would be module nine. Um, <laughs> Of good problem solving skills. Um, and your team working too. Yes. And if you wanted to see another example of working with food, um, there's another module that has a total physical response um, activity done with a very similar age group to this one in Thailand with um, green citrus fruit. And they're, they have the, the fruit and they're doing some um, very modified kinds of movement things with TPRS with that. So there are, there are more food examples in the videos too. This, this particular one um, with the kindergarten teacher, that is such an incredibly rich, like two or three minutes in there. Um, whenever Kay and I use that in a training situation, we go back and back and back and over that one um, with the observation guides that are in the manual. And lots and lots of pausing because, I mean, the reason that we did our learning stations before I even showed you hers, because ours are so bare bones, I mean, every the things that are happening at any given camera angle where you freeze frame, you know, what's on the walls, how the rooms are arranged, what the kids are doing. Um, and this is another one that we're talking about working up into the whole class, because inevitably when we show this, just this little bit of this, people say, I want to see that woman's class. Um, and then she has a very nice interview that she did at the end of it, too, where she talks about why she set things up and, and how and um, that kind of thing. So um, this one makes a really nice contrast with the dolls, with Pedro and the, and the boy and the girl. This is the last day of kindergarten, and that one was the first day. Um, there are all kinds of contrasts there, beginning of school year, end of school year, but kids exactly the same age. Um, they're both mainly um, Spanish-speaking populations. The, the little blonde gr couple of blonde girls that you see are um, actually from Russian immigrant families, so that's um, a completely Spanish community with just a little bit of Russian immigrant mixed in as well. But. Um, um, for those of you who are working with younger learners this summer or working in t-shirt training programs, I didn't have time to talk with you today, but I, except a couple of you, I do have a little mini traveling library I often take with me on training. Um, I have some books on rubrics, so what people often ask us when we're doing training is how do I assess these centers? How do I assess learning for younger learners? Um, you know, what is holistic? What is analytical? How do I go about doing that? So there's some really nice rubric books. Um, also, I have some books on um, differentiated instruction, both for general teacher ed, but also for EFL, foreign language teaching, differentiated instruction, because a lot of teachers in the EFL settings have a wide range of uh, language abilities in their classroom, and that, that's, that's a real challenge. Um, if you liked the centers and you're wanting to look for additional ideas, I have things like um, book reports. Uh, liter literature circles, some of these are for older secondary level as well. Um, lots and lots of literacy kinds of things. Um, discussion prompts. And Sarah, you've got the learning centers themselves. So if you're wanting to know, get more ideas for learning centers, um, there are, are, I have a bunch of reproducible books on it, setting them up and managing them and just if you're looking through to skim for ideas. So um, I have a list of this by email. If anybody wants a list, I can just send it to you too. Any last questions before we're going to? I promised mm -hmm. I'd get you out of here. We promised by four, Sarah. Just one quick, one quick comment on the. Um, this is all for younger learners today. Well, today's focus was younger learners. Yeah. Um, and but I have seen, uh, I have observed a high school mm -hmm. class where the teacher used exactly some of these same techniques, um, especially for transitioning between one from one activity to another activity use different parts of the room. Mm -hmm. So anytime he moved from here to here, the students knew what to do. Mm -hmm. yes. He trained, so he saved so much time. You know, and, and um, different types of uh, materials would be in certain places, right? Mm -hmm. So that the whole classroom was organized in a management, time management framework. And he would move from one approach to another even mm -hmm. from one he here if he's here he's doing TPR if he's here he's doing this kind of thing if he's here he's doing something else class moved like clockwork I've never seen anything like that. and his students by the way won all the awards at the Spanish contest in, uh, uh, in Salem so yeah yeah so this is this, that raises a really good point although our focus today was young learners and this notion of you know segregating the room and having multiple activities was demonstrated with younger learners today. It's something that can be very effective with, with other ages as well. Okay. All right. 
Okay, thank, thank you, you all very much for your attention. Give yourselves a hand. You did a good job. Yeah. Yeah.